Hello and welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Camelot. Now Camelot is a new style AMM Dex on Arbitrum. There's a lot of cool ideas in here, a lot of good tokenomics and well thought out systems in here. Um, there's a lot to go through, like I'm not going to go through all the tabs here. You can come in here and explore all these different tabs on your own and uh, try to find out like what things work. I'm going to go through a flowchart and explain to you all the different systems and then you can kind of, you know, take the information from that flowchart and uh, compile it over the UI that they have here, okay? Um, as usual, you know, go and read the docs, confirm what I'm saying. The docs is pretty good. Uh, join the Discord, you know, the Discord does, uh, they, they are active, they are, they did answer one of my questions quite quickly. So uh, that's, that's it. So, you know, let's go over to the flowchart and figure out how does Camelot work. Okay, so here we are on the flowchart. We have Dollar Bill and we have Caesar. Now, Caesar is a project owner and Dollar Bill is a user of Camelot or an, or an investor in the Caesar protocol, okay? So the first thing we have to do is Caesar needs to make an LP, right, for for his token. Now there is some talk about the launch pad. Um, I, I wasn't able to find any good information in the docs on the launch pad, so I'm gonna skip that aspect. But they do have a launch pad and they did use their, they did launch their own token on the launch pad. So that's, that's interesting, okay? So basically, he wants to make an LP. There's a few settings that he should set, okay? So the first thing that makes this very interesting is he can set the dynamic fees for each of the tokens. Now, he can set these, these fees however he likes. I'm not sure the capped maximum, but anyhow, so the idea here is that like if you buy the token, you pay like maybe 0.1%, but if you sell the token, you pay 0.2% or something like this, right? So there's, ref there's a dynamic fee that he can set on that LP, on the, the, the liquidity pool when he creates it, right? Um, he can choose the two different types of uh, LPs. So like there's the constant product where it's like, you know, basically uh, a token versus another token and the prices are not pegged. And then they have the stable swap as well where the prices are pegged. Okay, so if they were both stable coins, then you could uh, use this uh, stable swap uh, formula instead, right? And then the last thing that he can choose is he can decide if he wants to have a referral system in place. Now this needs to be, he needs to deal with the team himself. This is not permissionless. So he can set up a referral system for if he wants to integrate the swap and integrate this uh, LP into his own, his own front end, right? So then all the swaps that go through his front end will actually be going through the contracts of Camelot. However, they will have a referral kind of uh, sharing of the fees. And I'll get to the fees later, okay? Now, along comes uh, Dollar Bill. He's got some money. He's got some of these assets, and he supplies the assets to the LP. He gets back the LP token, and then he stakes the LP token to get an NFT, right? Now, he can lock this NFT for zero to six months. Uh, I believe that this six months might be evil be able to be even higher than six months. But uh, based on the UI, I could only find that the, the, a specific LP was able to go up to six months. So he can lock his LPs inside here for six months. Now, by putting the LPs inside this NFT, this NFT starts to earn two types of rewards. The, the um, Grail token, which is the the reward governance token of this protocol, and then the X Grail token as well. And now it says that you know the default setting is 20, 80 percent, but these could be different depending on the specific LP that you created. So you're going to get some liquid tokens and some locked tokens, basically. Okay. Now the the locking of this this um, this NFT, like if you put zero, then you will get the minimal amount. And if you put six months, you'll get the most amount of uh, these rewards. So by locking your liquidity, you get more Grail and more X Grail tokens, okay? Now, what can you do with these Grail tokens? You could sell them, right? Or you could lock them as well. So if you want to create more X Grail tokens, then you can lock them, you know, for between 15 to six months. So 15 days to six months. And they, they are locked one to one. So you put one grail in, you get one X grail out as long as you lock it for the, 
the six months, right? Depending on the lock, sorry, depending on how long you, not depending on how long. So you can lock it for however long you want, okay? You'll understand why it doesn't make a difference in a second. Now, if you want to exit, okay, you, if the time is all finished, so your, your locking time has finished, then you will get back tokens one to one. If you unlock or you want to exit early and your time has not finished, then the remaining amount, you will still get some grail, but the remaining amount of grail that you, you because you didn't keep it for the entire locked period, will be burned. So this is one of the burning mechanisms that causes the grail token to be inflationary. So let's say you locked a uh, hundred and you left early and you only got 80 back and the 20 grail tokens would be then burned. Okay, moving on. Now, what can you do with this X grail token? There's quite a bit. Okay, you can, it's possible that you could take this X grail to a third party protocol and use it somewhere else if some third party protocol decides to adopt the use of this X grail token. On the other hand, you can use this X grail to boost your specific uh, NFT. So boost uh, these rewards even further. Um, you can also put it into the dividend contract. Now, as you can see, when you when you move this delegation or this uh, allocation or this when you when you lock when you like connect this to the NFT or when you connect it to the dividends, but you want to remove it, then there is a burn fee as well. So when you 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 make a choice and then don't change your choice per se, right? Um, moving on now, what can you do with this NFT? This NFT is gaining you these rewards, right? But you can also stake it into a nitro pool. Okay. So let's say Caesar is like, Hey, I want to, to incentivize my pool even further with some sort of token. It doesn't have to be the governance token. Maybe he has, he produces ETH somehow, and he wants to give those to the token holders or the liquidity providers. He can create a nitro pool supply it with the reward and then do boosted bill or sorry dollar bill could then stake his nft into this nitro pool now some of the settings that caesar can decide is like maybe how many tokens inside here so like if it's just like he's just got dust in here then maybe he can't enter right um the lock period maybe he's saying oh you have to have locked your your, your lps for at least three months in order to enter the pool or whatever you know whatever he decides and then if he really wants he can even just whitelist it so maybe he has a community and some sort of incentivization inside his own protocol where he's gathering uh, uh, people's wallet addresses and then he can create the whitelist now this again would be something that you, caesar would have to deal with the camelot team in order to build this it's not permissionless per se okay moving on the last thing we're going to talk about are the fees, okay? The fees are pretty complicated, but interesting as well. So there are fees. Now, the first thing I'll mention is that if there is the referral program, there's a 20% cut, of, a cap of 20%. So when he deals with Camelot and he says, I want to use a referral, then they will take, you know, up to 20% of these fees and give it to those referral links. Now, if there's no referral, then this is this can be ignored, okay? So the fees that are left from after the referral, they are split accordingly. So 60% go into the NFT as trading fees, okay? 22% go as a dividend to the people who allocated their X grail to the dividend pool. And 12% uh, are given to basically just buy the grail token and burn it. And then 5% are given to the team and the treasury. So that's pretty much a pretty good well overlay overview of how this protocol works. I think it's pretty interesting. There are some definitely clever things in here, especially these uh, this X grail allocation thing. And then the fact that they, they pay you uh, your rewards in both X grail as well as uh, liquid grail tokens okay so uh, that's pretty much it for today uh, i thank you so much for watching and i appreciate it and i hope this has been useful so goodbye